In this video I want to introduce you to a group of shapes called conic sections. And the reason they're called conic sections is because they are produced by intersecting a plane through two cones, or possibly one cone depending on how the plane is angled. So here we've got the four conic sections, and I'm just going to go through them individually here. So let's start with the first one, which is one we're all very familiar with, which is a circle. So if I take a plane, like a piece of paper, and I could uh, cut through this cone uh, so that that paper or that plane was parallel with the base of the cone, the intersection of the cone and the plane would be a circle. And of course we have lots of circles in our world and lots of uses for circles. Now if I took that plane and I tilted it just a little bit so that the plane was not parallel with the base of the cone, then the intersection of the plane and the cone would be an ellipse. And it could be, the plane could be up here intersecting this top one as well, you'd still get an ellipse. You're probably familiar with this shape, but maybe don't realize how many places that it pops up in the real world. Um, obviously we have it in advertising, um, but the, the um, orbits of all the planets are elliptical. That was a big discovery. They first thought that they were circular and couldn't make things line up and discovered that they were elliptical. A property of ellipses is that uh, they have two points here that are called the foci. Each is a focus and a focus. The plural is foci. And if you were to reflect or bounce something from one focus uh, off the side of this thing, if you could do that, it would go straight to the other focus no matter which angle. So if I was here, if I had a, here's a pool table down here that's elliptical, it kind of uses some of these properties here. And I think the, I haven't played this game before, but I think the hole that the ball goes in is in the middle. So it doesn't have pockets like a regular pool table. It's at one of the foci. And so if I was at a particular foci, I could bounce the ball anywhere off the, ta the side of the table and it would go into the other go to the other foci or go through the other foci. And this is also true in a three-dimensional way that you see in this picture. And there's these rooms called whisper rooms. If you get a chance to Google whisper room, um, if you're standing at one of the foci here, you can talk as quiet as you want. And if someone's standing at the other foci, they can hear you because all of the sound waves are bouncing off all the walls and going directly to one point. So it's kind of cool. All right, the next one is called an hyperbola. This is probably the one that you haven't heard of. Uh, a hyperbola is created when you intersect your plane perpendicular to the base of the cone. So a hyperbola is the only one of these conic sections, these four conic sections I'm gonna show you that intersects both of the cones. And so a hyperbola has two shapes. Um, down here with this lamp, where you have this shape up here, this uh, curve, and then down here there's another one. That's a good emulation of a, of a hyperbola. Or the side of this um, nuclear reactor, I think it is, and then this other side would mirror this idea of a uh, hyperbola. And um, also this light right here. All right, the last one is a parabola, which you probably have some familiarity with. And a parabola, you can see down here, you'd get a parabola. It's sort of like an ellipse because you're just intersecting one of the cones, but the plane has to be parallel to this line created by the two sides of the cone so that it only is going to intersect part of the cone and then through the base. Remember, the ellipse is going to intersect both sides of the cone. Okay, A parabola has some cool properties. It also has something called a focus. And if you um, reflect something off, this would be like a three-dimensional parabola, a parabola that's been rotated. Uh, if you reflect something off that, everything reflects to a point called the focus. And so our satellite disks are, uh, excuse me, satellite dishes are like that. Um, and there's usually an arm or something right here, and that's where it's receiving all that information. The flight of an object is a parabolic shape, and um, so it has lots of, of uses. All right, so these are our conic sections. Technically, a line is also could be considered a conic section if you took this plane and just touched the edge of that cone and the edge of that cone 
we could have a line and we could call that a conic section but generally if you say conic sections to somebody they're going to say these four items i mean technically you could take this plane where the circle is and move it up so that it just touches that point so you could call a point a conic section but so conic sections have some interesting equations and to to look at those equations we're going to go ahead and go to desmos and just play around with it a little bit. I'm not going to get too deep into the equations, but let's start with a circle. So you may have seen the equation of a circle. We need an x squared plus a y squared, and then we need to equal some number. Let's say we equal 9, all right? So we get a circle. Now notice the radius is 3, which is the square root of 9. If I change this to 16, my radius is 4, okay? So whatever this number is right here, that's going to be the radius squared. And you have to have an x squared and a y squared, and they have to be added together. Let's see what would happen if we change this to a minus. Let's see what would happen. That was a times. <laughs> that was kind of cool to look at, but that was multiplication. That's not a conic section there. All right, if I change it to a minus, do you recognize this one? What is this one? Okay. It is the hyperbola that's right hopefully you said hyperbola it's basically these yellow shapes here it's got these two parts to it okay right here see this kind of looks like the edges of that nuclear reactor thing where's that there it is here and here look like like this except this is um needs to be wider so we could make this wider we could uh, change these points let's see what happens if we put a eight there oh that makes it skinnier okay let's try what would happen if we put an 8 here? There we go. Now that's starting to look like that nuclear reactor thing. Okay, so what's the difference between a circle and a hyperbola? Right here, this plus minus. Okay, if I change this to a plus, I get a circle. If I change this to a minus, I get a hyperbola. Now I was putting numbers in front of these and that was changing, you know, the width. Um, and the shape of it, the narrowness. Uh, what would happen if I changed the x squared and the y squared? Because it matters when you're subtracting, right? What if I put the y squared first and then the x squared? Ah, look at that. It has flipped. In other words, I made the x squared negative and the y squared positive. That's going to change the way that it opens. So if the y squared has a positive coefficient, it's going to open around the y axis, up and down, okay? If the y squared, if the x squared is positive and the y squared is negative, then it's going to open left and right. And you can mess around with this on decimals, so I encourage you to do that. All right, so there's our circle and hy our hyperbola. Now, another way we could write the equation of this circle is we could divide everything here by 16. Let me change this back to x squared, y squared. Okay, if I divide every everything by 16. All right, I'm going to divide this by 16. I'm going to divide this by 16. Uh-oh. Divide by 16. And if I divide this by 16, I get 1. All right, there's my circle. I didn't change the equation. I just divided everything by 16. Now I'm going to change one of these 16s to a 9. Ah, look at that. So below the x squared, I changed it to a 9. So now I, I kind of have a radius of 3. I want It's not a radius, but from the x, uh, on the x-axis going left and right, on the horizontal axis from the center. And on the y going up and down, I have 4, which is the square root of 16. All right, now when this was a 16, if you take the square root of 16, you're going 4 to the left, 4 to the right from the center. And from the y... Square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so if I change, say if I change the y to 1, ah, now it's only going to go, the square root of 1 is 1, up 1, down 1. And the x stays at 4. So this is how you get an ellipse. It's basically like a circle, but you're changing the radius in one direction. That's not official math terms, but that's a kind of a way you could think about it. Now you can shift these shapes just like you shift any other shape. If I want to shift something left and right, I replace the x with x minus or x plus something. Okay, so by replacing 
the x with x minus 1, that shifted it to the right. If I replace it with x plus 3, that's going to shift it to the left 3. If I want to shift it up and down, I replace the y with, uh, if I want to shift it, um, let's do that. So if, because it's y plus 3 inside the squared, that's going to shift it down. Some of you guys are used to if the 3 is added to the other side, it shifts it up and down. But if you replace the y with y plus 3, it does the opposite, just like you're used to with the x value. So we could shift these all around. The key, though, the plus is going to make it either a circle or an ellipse, as long as the x squared and the y is squared. And then the if these two numbers are the same, it, it's going to make it a circle. Okay, I could change this back to a 16. That's a circle. If these two numbers are different, it's an ellipse. All right, if I change this to a minus, what's going to happen? It's going to be a hyperbola, all right? And this 3 and this 3 shift the center of the hyperbola here, and this 16 and this 4 um, have to do with how skinny or wide it is. If I could change this 16 to a 1, and it's going to change how skinny or wide it is. And there's a lot more to that in graphing these, but I just kind of want you to get the general idea. All right, so the last one is a parabola, and you guys have done parabolas before, like y equals x squared, and you know how to shift parabolas. So what's the difference between the equation of a, hy uh, a hyperbola, parabola, circle? All right, the other three guys we did, these guys, let's go back over here, circle, ellipse, hyperbola, those are not functions. Right? They do not pass the vertical line test. They're not functions. They have an x squared and a y squared. Right, if you try to solve them for y, you're going to get a plus or minus kind of a situation. So this parabola is a function, so that's a big difference between the rest of these conic sections. The parabola is a function. This parabola is a function. I'm going to show you a parabola is not a function. The other conic sections are not. All right, if I took this guy and I switched the x and the y, let's say I change this to x equals y squared. Turn this one off. Is that still a parabola? Absolutely. That is a parabola. Is it a function? No, it's not a function. But it's still a parabola. It's just a sideways parabola. Okay, And we could shift it around just like we do the other parabolas. If I want to shift this to the right, I subtract 1. If I want to shift this up, I change the y. If I want to shift it up 2, I change the y to y minus 2, and that shifts it up 2. So the shifting is the same whether it's a function or not. Okay, so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea all right, parabola only has one of the variables squared, either the x squared or the y squared. Circle, ellipse, hyperbola, both the x squared, both the x is squared and the y is squared. Circle and ellipse, the x squared and the y squared are both positive coefficients. Hyperbola, one positive, one negative. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good idea about the equations of these conic sections. So the next thing we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at a couple conic sections. Uh, let's see, i got a couple I want to look at here. x squared. Actually, I'm going to turn this off and then have you tell me what shape it is, okay? I'm just going to put the equation in. x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 equals 1, okay? I'm going to click this here, and it's going to show the shape. But what shape is that going to be? Circle, ellipse, hyperbola, parabola, line. Hopefully you said ellipse. All right, it's got the plus. The x squared and the y squared are both positive. It's got two different numbers under here. That's an ellipse. All right, the next one I want to look at is y equals 2. I'm going to turn this one off. x to the second minus 6. Okay, so before I turn this on, what shape is this? Can you picture it? Hopefully, it's a parabola, right? And since the x is squared, it's up or down parabola. If the y was squared and the x was not, it would be a side-to-side -side parabola. So we can see these two equations here, these two shapes have four intersection points. There they are. Here's the question. If I gave you these two equations, could you find those intersection points algebraically? And that's what we're going to cover in our next video.